were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I haven't been this nervous since I first stood here 15 years ago. <laughs> Many of you may remember that I often would start a sermon with what I'll call sermon seasoning. That is just a little story, something to, for you to think about. And then I will go back to the sermon. So when I turn around after this and go back, don't say, Whew, four minutes, he did it? <laughs> How many of you have left the hometown that you grew up in? How many of you have gone back to your hometown? I went back to Toppenish a few years ago and I learned what I already knew. You really can't go back. Life moves on and life had moved on there and I had moved on. The field that I used to hunt pheasants in was now planted with houses. The Hubba Hubba Cafe, the ice cream store and soda fountain where I could get a five cent chocolate soda was now an antique store and nothing was five cents. The theater I used to go to and the church I grew up in were now closed. They didn't exist anymore. I didn't see anybody I knew and no one recognized me. I guess in some way we all change. We all become someone different. Jesus seems to have that experience as he returns to his hometown of Nazareth. No one seems to recognize him. Did the people in the synagogue shout, hey, look, everybody, it's Jesus, he's back? No. No, they didn't. They questioned if it was really him. Perhaps they were thinking in their minds about Jesus as a young child or an adolescent with a hammer in his hand helping Joseph. But because of their disbelief, because they did not believe in Jesus, something really strange happened. He had no power. He could work no mighty miracles. He was amazed. Bewildered is probably a better word at their unbelief. And I think this text presents us an interesting question today. How is God's power on earth linked to our belief, our faith in Jesus Christ today? Without the belief of the people, Jesus could work no miracles. So how then is our belief or lack of it involved with the unfolding of the kingdom here in Gig Harbor today. What a challenging text for us to, to hear this morning. We aren't just sitting in the pews or chairs listening. We are an active part of salvation history through our faith. Our faith and God's power are changing and active in the world today. Power, power to feed the hungry, power to care for the poor, power to cure the sick, power to stand with the oppressed and marginalized. So I'd like you to ponder something today, something to think about in your life. How does this relationship of God's power and your faith make a difference in our world today? How does it make a difference in your life today? Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. As our gospel story unfolds today, Jesus is walking the dusty roads of Galilee and returns to his hometown of Nazareth. But hometown hero would not be a good title for this gospel lesson. 
The stage has been set for this gospel story in Nazareth with Jesus performing two miracles in the last chapter of Mark. Curing the woman with the hemorrhage and raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. We might think that Jesus is on a roll. His road trip was really, really good. But it's not a good homecoming for Jesus. Set against the story of Jesus' recent miracles, the reaction of the people to this carpenter they remembered was probably a mixture of curiosity, astonishment. Could this man they knew as a young child, a young carpenter with a hammer in his hand helping Joseph, now teaching them in the synagogue, could he really be the son of God? Or was he simply out of his mind, as Mark tells us in chapter 3, when his family had to go out and restrain him? In confused and perhaps fearful astonishment, the people ask, where did this man get all this knowledge? What is the wisdom that's been given to him? What powerful deeds are being done by his hands? Hands that to them were simply the humble hands of a carpenter. For in their humble, humble hometown minds, that's all they could see. They were so astonished and disbelieving that they couldn't accept what they were seeing and hearing. They even downright got nasty with Jesus. They asked, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? That was an insult, because in Jewish tradition, At the time, a man was always named in relationship to his father, never with his mother. That was an insult. Jesus properly would have been addressed by the hometown folks as Yeshua bin Yosef or Yeshua bar Yosef. Jesus, son of Joseph. The people asking where where Jesus got his wisdom and power as the son of Mary may have also been an insult. No way could Joseph have been your father, Jesus. He was a carpenter. And look at you, that's not a hammer in your hand, it's a scroll. Who do you think you are? Wow, little did they know how right they were. Because Jesus, son of God, was beyond belief for them, beyond possibility in their hometown minds. In the two miracle stories in the preceding chapter, faith and belief, play a major role in the miracles. Jesus is not the only participant in the miracles. The woman with the hemorrhage, do you remember what Jesus told her? Daughter, your faith has made you well. And when he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, do you remember what he said to Jairus? Do not fear, only believe. Belief, if it ever existed in Nazareth, had taken a leave of absence. And we're told that with no belief by the people, Jesus could do no power, no no deed of power. I guess that tells us we can't sit back and expect Jesus to do the work, to perform the miracles alone. Without your belief, the miracle of Christ's love and caring in the kingdom will not occur. Let me say that again. Without our belief, the miracles of Christ's power in the kingdom will not occur. Without your belief and your hands, the miracle of feeding and caring for the hungry that this church so deeply and dearly embraces might not happen. Without your belief and hands, the miracle of healing and caring for the sick that the care team provides might not happen. Without your faith and hands, the miracle of quilts and prayer shawls that provide comfort and warmth to those in need might not happen. Without your faith and hands, the miracle of of standing for human rights might not happen. To expect miracles without faith and belief is to only dream of what could be and never will be. Dear friends, this gospel message resonates with the humanity of Jesus. 
as he experiences and feels the pain of rejection and separation, the pain of brokenness as he's separated from synagogue, from family. And when that happens to us, and if it happens to you, know this, Jesus has experienced that pain that goes with separation and rejection. He knows the pain for he has felt our pain. Jesus Christ has experienced the pain of rejection and separation. But did Jesus give up his trust in God when he was rejected in Nazareth? No. He trusted God for strength and healing. Clearly, faith and love and forgiveness can triumph over rejection and separation, especially with the assurance, as Paul tells us, that God's grace is sufficient, sufficient to heal ourselves and a broken world. At this table today, we're going to experience the unconditional love of God and know that God's grace is sufficient. Through the bounty of grace at our Lord's table, we are forgiven and we may then forgive others. We may then heal that brokenness and separation of this world. We are reminded at this table that we are not separated from God because of Jesus' death on the cross. We are united with God forever. And it's through that unconditional love of God Grace poured freely and abundantly over us in the waters of our baptism and at this table of grace that we are empowered to heal rejection and separation and embrace those of this world who are rejected, who are marginalized by society. And through our faith and the power of Christ, we can and do make a difference in this world. Can you envision in your mind Jesus standing at the city limit sign of Nazareth? Maybe he's shaking the dust from his sandals, rejected by his hometown and family, shaking the dust from his feet, eyes set on a journey of salvation for all people, for all of us here this morning. And in spite of that rejection that he experienced, he asks only one thing of us, that we believe. We simply believe. Believe that the power of God's grace is sufficient and will heal not only us, but heal the wounds of this world. Dear friends, what a gift of grace God has given us. How will you use that gift of grace in your life today? And will that gift of grace be sufficient? May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen.